Hello, and welcome to the Rejuvenation Roundup podcast, where we explore the latest in life extension and anti-aging science with a dive into a month's worth of insights and new breakthroughs. This podcast is a combined effort of the Lifespan Extension Advocacy Foundation, which operates Lifespan.io, and Future Grind, a podcast that explores the ethics and impact of emerging science and technology. This year, May brought us a shower of research, interviews, and insights into the present and future of rejuvenation biotechnology. Here's what's been accomplished. Starting off with our research roundup. New research from scientists at Massachusetts General Hospital indicates that long-term mild oxygen restriction, or hypoxia, may drastically increase the lifespan of a specific mouse model of aging. These mice experience premature aging, though they appear normal at birth. Living or training in high-altitude, oxygen-limited environments has been shown to positively impact health span and potentially lifespan. The famous and long-lived naked mole rat thrives in such conditions. In the study, scientists exposed four-week-old mice, just before the onset of premature aging signs, to continuous hypoxia, reducing the oxygen concentration from 21% to 11%. This resulted in a 50% extension of their median lifespan, comparable to the best-known interventions for this mouse model. The maximum lifespan also increased, although less dramatically, reflecting a concept called compression of mortality, which refers to a greater impact on health span than on maximum lifespan. Contrary to dietary restriction, another potent anti-aging intervention in mice, hypoxia did not lead to reduced food intake. In fact, Oxygen-restricted mice ate more than the control group but maintained similar body weights. Unlike calorie-restricted mice, which are smaller despite being healthier and living longer, these mice did not face this trade-off. However, the study hit a roadblock when attempting to determine the mechanism behind the significant effect. Neither DNA damage markers nor two popular senescence markers significantly differed between oxygen-restricted and control mice. Also, RNA sequencing data did not offer insights. More research is needed using normal aging mice and potentially combining hypoxia and caloric restriction to explore any cumulative effect. The mechanisms behind hypoxia's benefits remain a mystery for now. Scientists have recently turned their attention to the osteoporosis-fighting drug soldronic acid for its potential activity against cellular senescence, a state in which cells lose their ability to divide and function, contributing to aging and various diseases. Zoldronic acid is already approved by the FDA and has been used for over two decades to prevent bone fractures, but researchers recently observed that the benefits associated with soldronic acid resembled those of known senolytics. The researchers then conducted an in vitro experiment using human lung fibroblasts that had been made senescent and compared them to a control group of non-senescent cells. They found that soldronic acid exhibited significant senolytic activity preferentially eliminating senescent cells while leaving healthy cells largely unaffected. The researchers extended their investigation to naturally aged mice, administering zoldronic acid for eight weeks and then testing their physical performance and protein markers related to cellular senescence. While endurance-related physical challenges didn't yield statistically significant results, grip strength tests did, indicating that the treated mice had stronger grips. Additionally, levels of proteins associated with cellular senescence were significantly reduced in the treated groups. The scientists also found that soldronic acid decreased senescence markers in a group of cells linked to bone degradation, suggesting that the drug's senolytic activity might contribute to its primary use in bone protection. However, more research is required to identify appropriate dosages for removing other senescent cell populations and to explore the possibility of developing a more targeted drug with fewer side effects. In a groundbreaking study, researchers from the University of California, San Diego, and the company Human Longevity analyzed the quality of healthcare-related responses from both doctors and the AI model chat GPT 3.5. They utilized real-life exchanges from the Reddit forum AskDocs and compared them with answers generated by the AI. The responses were then assessed by licensed healthcare professionals based on the quality of information provided and the level of empathy expressed. The study showed that the AI gave considerably longer answers than doctors and surprisingly, was favored by the evaluators in over 78% of cases. The chatbot scored an average of over 4, considered better than good, whereas human responses averaged over three, rated as worse than good. 
ChatGPT responses also outperform human responses in terms of empathy, scoring over 3.5 compared to the humans, which were just over 2. The researchers did, however, highlight limitations to their study, such as the fact that online forum exchanges differ from face-to-face -face dialogues and the possible language barriers for non-native English-speaking doctors. Despite this, they proposed considering integrating chatbots in clinical settings, given their potential role in drafting patient messages and their value in areas with limited access to healthcare professionals. Sticking with AI, in a recent study published in the International Journal of Medical Sciences, researchers employed artificial intelligence and machine learning to identify molecules capable of inhibiting the mTOR protein, a mechanism commonly associated with lifespan extension. Current mTOR inhibitors, such as rapamycin, have potential side effects like anemia, increased blood pressure, and new-onset diabetes. As such, the team sought to discover more efficient inhibitors with fewer side effects. They used AI to generate a pool of 1,000 molecules, refined down to 132 for potential mTOR targeting, and finally selected 29 for their presumed low toxicity. The winning molecule was tested on a roundworm, and the molecule did seem to extend the lifespan of these worms, albeit modestly. Interestingly, the AI predicted that the molecule might also be an effective agent in treating prostate cancer. The team validated this hypothesis by testing it on human cancer cells. It exhibited a similar effect on cancer to rapamycin. While these results are promising, further testing on organisms closer to humans, such as mice, is needed before moving to clinical trials. This molecule presents an intriguing alternative to rapamycin, especially given the AI prediction of its low toxicity, suggesting limited side effects. Nonetheless, these assumptions will require confirmation in clinical trials. Separately, research published recently in Nature Aging has described a machine learning algorithm that finds senescent cell-removing drugs and compared the algorithm's discoveries to existing compounds. The preliminary analysis was favorable, 25 of the initial 216 compounds that that AI identified were found, by initial experiment, to have senolytic properties in the real world. While this is a relatively small percentage, it is clear that the algorithm had effectively narrowed down a very large search space. None of the negative controls had senolytic properties. It's clear that AI is becoming an even more major player in healthcare and drug discovery. That's it for our research roundup. You can find more on these and other stories on our website at lifespan.io forward slash roundup. Sticking with our AI theme from the research roundup, Lifespan News has released a new video discussing the role of ChatGPT-like AI in longevity. The video discusses a number of groundbreaking areas of improvement, and here's just one example. Hands down, the most exciting technology in the world right now is GPT-4 and large language models in general, which are being given new skills at a wild pace. And although projects like Chaos GPT, which was built to destroy humanity, tends to grab a lot of headlines, for every one of those, there are hundreds more being used to advance humanity. This is especially true in the longevity and medical field in general. While GPT-5 and beyond are on the horizon and coming closer every day, we haven't even scratched the surface of what GPT-4 is capable of. It's already today streamlining doctors' notes and paperwork, it's synthesizing new chemicals that have never been tested, and providing faster diagnostics. In this video, I'll cover some amazing ways GPT-4 is shattering the medical landscape, making healthcare better, faster, and cheaper, and talk about AI's potential for radically changing longevity in the not-so-distant future. Diagnostics. In today's healthcare landscape, traditional diagnostic methods can feel like playing a high-stake games of whack-a-mole with human error, potential misdiagnosis, and unnecessary testing rearing their ugly heads. But with the advent of GPT-4, diagnostics in healthcare are on the cusp of a revolution. Generative AI's unparalleled pattern recognition and natural language understanding capabilities hold the promise of improving diagnostic accuracy. Ultimately, making healthcare better, faster, and cheaper. Google's MedPalm 2 consistently performed at an expert doctor level on medical exam questions, scoring 85%. This is an 18% improvement from MedPalm's previous performance. Dr. Isaac Cohane, a computer scientist at Harvard and a physician, recently put GPT-4 to the test, discovering it was able to answer U.S. medical exam licensing questions correctly more than 90% of the time. 
According to Dr. Cohane, GPT-4 even demonstrated better clinical judgment than many doctors he has observed. In one stunning example, GPT-4 correctly diagnosed a rare 1 in 100,000 condition using only a few key details provided by Dr. Cohane. Despite its impressive capabilities, GPT-4 is not without its limitations. The AI model can still make mistakes and may occasionally produce incorrect information. Dr. Cohane writes in his book, The AI Revolution in Medicine, that he was both impressed and horrified. On the one hand, I was having a sophisticated medical conversation with a computational process, he wrote. On the other hand, just as mind-blowing was the anxious realization that millions of families would soon have access to this impressive medical expertise, and I could not figure out how we could guarantee or certify that GPT-4's advice would be safe or effective. Growing pains aside, the implications are incredibly exciting. With faster and more accurate diagnoses, GPT-4 has the potential to significantly reduce misdiagnosis rates and unnecessary testing leading to better resource allocation and cost savings in the healthcare industry. But it's like Tesla's full self-driving software. It still needs a human in the driver's seat, taking responsibility and intervening when necessary. In addition to its diagnostic prowess, GPT-4 can also assist doctors in communicating with patients more effectively, translating medical jargon into easily understandable language, and even providing suggestions for compassionate bedside manners. Lifespan News also released new YouTube shorts, Here's one discussing some comments related to longevity from a well-known figure in government and entertainment. From being the biggest action star in the world to the governor of California, Arnold Schwarzenegger has done a lot, but through all of it, he's focused on extending his life. In a recent interview with The Hollywood Reporter, he said, my plan is to live forever, and so far, so good. He previously shared his disdain for death on The Howard Stern Show. I'm not afraid of death, I I'm am. just pissed off about it. Yes. Because I mean, especially I think when you have a life like we have, yes. and then one day it's over, mm. I mean, that really pisses me off. But it, it is upsetting and I cannot stand it. I Are you not, angry about it? I'm so angry about it. Me too. I'm furious about it. If the idea of death makes you furious as well, please subscribe to Lifespan News and head to Lifespan.io to join our quest to extend your life. You can find more Lifespan News videos on their YouTube channel. A new Life Noggin video on overpopulation has been released, and it tackles some recurring and widespread misconceptions. Here's a taste. As medical science and technology advance, so do human lifespans, and as scientists continue to make technological breakthroughs, life expectancy will keep rising. But what happens when people start living longer than ever before, no longer dying from old age? Where will we go? What will we eat? Won't we all be squished together like sardines? Calm down, me. <laughs> you don't want to go pop a pixel. Let's talk about why overpopulation might not be an oversized issue. Cue the intro. Hey there. Welcome to Life Noggin. In the pre-modern world, life expectancy was just 30 years. But now, after a few centuries of industrialization, global life expectancy is over 70 and is projected to reach 82 by 2100. While this could result in a larger elderly population requiring more resources for care, which some countries are currently experiencing, advances in medical technology won't just help people live longer lives, but healthier ones too. The number of years a person is expected expected to live at full health, known as their healthy life expectancy, has increased 8% in the last 20 years, from 58.3 to 63.7. This means they'll be able to stay in the workforce longer, and won't require as much expensive medical or home care, which will reduce the current burden the elderly place on social and healthcare systems. In fact, scientists estimate that slowing the aging process and increasing life expectancy by just one year could save the US economy economy, get this, $38 trillion. But as people continue to live longer, the world population is also increasing. This is happening at a rate of around 82.4 million people a year. And by 2059, the population is expected to continue to grow gradually from today's 8 billion to over 
10 billion. But interestingly, by the end of the century, it will start to go down. That's largely because fertility rates are decreasing due to advances in society, such as women's empowerment, lower child mortality, and the rising cost of raising children. Countries like Japan and Korea have actually been incentivizing people to have more babies due to the seriously declining birth rates and rapidly aging population. Still, 10 billion people is a lot of people. Where will we keep them? What will they eat? I'm trying to bake as many pizza bagels as fast as I can, okay? Of the 149 million square kilometers of land on Earth, 106 million are habitable. Currently, you humans live on only about 1% of this habitable area, so there's plenty of room to expand, but you use another 46% of it for your food. Luckily, farmers are already looking for more sustainable ways to make more food with less land as an effort to curb climate change and feed the growing population. And as they become more efficient, water availability will increase as well, which is a good thing, since parts of the world are already experiencing water scarcity and more people will only exacerbate the issue. However, while we may soon have solutions for food and water deficits, it'll be up to us as a society to ensure that everyone gets them, which they should. It's a no-brainer. As Grandma Blocko would say, be nice. Life Noggin also created a video for our partners at VitaDAO, which is at the forefront of decentralized science and longevity. Are you ready to join the future of longevity science? For centuries, scientists have been developing technologies and medicines that increase longevity. That's good. Often, this means finding novel therapies to treat or sometimes even cure disease helping people live longer. That's really good. But to achieve major increases in longevity, you have to take on age-related diseases. These can be more difficult to treat due to their connection to natural biological processes. So instead of managing symptoms, some researchers are working to take control of their root cause, aging. Aging isn't just gray hair and wrinkled skin. I know. There's a lot more to it. It's a natural process that your cells go through, which can result in diseases like Alzheimer's, cardiovascular disease, and type 2 diabetes. All those things, really bad. Right now, there are tons of technologies and therapeutics being developed that may be able to slow or even stop the aging process. And while many of these get funding in the late stages of the research and development process, once they've proven themselves effective, many others are lost early on before they even have a chance to do so due to insufficient funding. And if you're like, wow, that sounds very frustrating. I wish there was a way I could help. Well, Check this out. Through VitaDAO, you can take matters into your own hands. VitaDAO funds early stage therapeutics that could have a big impact on longevity in exchange for the intellectual property the research creates. But unlike your typical medical charity, VitaDAO is a democratic, self-governing entity whose research projects are selected and funded directly by its members. As a decentralized autonomous organization, VitaDAO has no central authority. Instead, its members participate in discussions and vote on proposals that determine everything from what researchers should receive funding to how the data and IP that's generated should be managed. The best part is that anyone can become a member of VitaDAO. In return for contributing money, work, or other resources, you get tokens, called Vita, that allow you to vote on and decide the future of the organization. Your funds go to support research, and more money is made when the data and IP generated through their research are sold. Since it launched in 2021, VitaDAO's nearly 9,000 members have provided over $4 million to more than 17 research projects any of which could one day revolutionize longevity science. So join VitaDAO today, become a member, and get involved with research shaping the future of human health and longevity. If you're interested in anything you heard here, please visit lifespan.io to learn more and get involved in our fight against aging. There you'll find new interviews, articles, videos, and more. That's it for this episode of the Rejuvenation Roundup podcast. Thank you very much for spending another month with us and for your help in the fight against age-related diseases. Whether you're donating, spreading the word, or simply listening to our content, we appreciate your help. Remember to subscribe, leave a review, and post about us on social media. This will increase our reach and introduce more people to the importance of life extension science. Don't forget, you can get additional deep dives into science, technology, and futurism on the Future Grind podcast. Find out more at futuregrind.org. Thank you for joining us, 
and we hope to see you next time on the Rejuvenation Roundup podcast.